Uh, next, we have Charlie Carroll from Cray. Charlie, he is an OpenSFS board member. Uh, he is vice president for storage. Research and development, that's what R&D stands for, research and development at Cray. He's been involved with Luster for nearly a decade. Charlie is serving as active cha acting chairman of the OpenSFS board. And he's a great guy. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlie Carroll. So Open Scalable File Systems, or OpenSFS, uh, is the group that sponsors this meeting every year. Um, you can read here some standard boilerplate about what OpenSFS is all about. I'm not going to read it to you, but I want to call your attention to the last bullet. Uh, the end goal is the ev continued evolution of robust open source file systems for the HPC community. So what I'm going to talk about today is a little bit about some accomplishments, um, uh, recent accomplishments of the folks in this room. Uh, and then give some hints about some changes that are coming and how OpenSFS is organized. But the reason I call your attention to this final bullet is this is sort of the guiding light. This is what we're trying to do here. And so as we go through these changes, we're going to change how the group is organized, but this fundamental goal is not going to change. This is what uh, drives everything that we do. So a lot of this has already been talked about. Um, uh, Lustre 2.7 came out about a year ago. Um, I'm not that technical guy to take you through all of the features, but it was a pretty meaty feature release uh, when it came out. Uh, we talked, we heard from Andreas about 2.8 earlier. Andreas is the guy to take you through these, the technical aspects of these features, which he did. Um, I put little gold stars next to uh, LFSCK and DNE. Um, in Lustre 2.8, uh, we released the a uh, final version of uh, a bunch of code that's been brewing for how many years? Lots of years, five years, Peter Jones says. Um, uh, and so that's something to feel pretty good about. Um, these are pretty substantial uh, improvements to Lustre, um, and they're out there. Uh, again, we don't need to go through the Lustre client except it into the, ooh, this is an older version of the chart. But at any rate, the staging kernel that's in, um, uh, where is James? James took us through that earlier today. Hello, James. Thank you. That was a very exciting story. And it was um, at the time. It was um, tense bananas, as we say, uh, that we were this close to getting kicked out of the kernel. Um, once that happens, it's really hard to go back. And so we rescued it, and now they like us, which I think is a great thing, thanks to, to James and to Ben and to all the folks that worked on that. Um, part of what OpenSFS has done, too, is work on uh, or commission development contracts. We had a couple of those that we closed out, um, Dev001, uh, which had the DNE and LFSCK work, and then Dev004, which was the client simplification, which I forget who, somebody referenced that earlier. So if you look at this, you can see that there's quite a bit that's happened um, in the past year or so. Another way to look at the world, another way to feel good about some of the stuff that's happened is uh, the growth in the community. Um, we have 170 people here in Portland, Oregon in early April. Um, I think that's a marvelous response. Uh, the largest survey response ever. This was when Peter talked earlier. Um, there are more people out there using Lustre, uh, reporting back in surveys, and I don't know what sort of response rate you think you get, but usually it's not great response rate. So if you've got 100 responses, that means there's lots of people out there using Lustre. Uh, again, I think from Peter, um, more developers contributed to Lustre 2.8 than any release ever. Um, I think that's a great accomplishment uh, that we should all feel very good about. Uh, developer day. So um, I manage people for a living. It's what I do. I used to be a programmer many years ago. Um, but as a manager, I am very conscious of the fact that uh, what I do is overhead, um, and that what really sells, I work for Cray, so we develop supercomputers, we sell supercomputers, and the people that do that are the people on my team, not me, um, but it's the guys like uh, Ben and Justin um, and Chris, wherever you are, are guys on my team that are the real workers that get stuff done. So I have kind of a soft spot in my heart for guys like that. Um, developer day uh, uh, plays right to that soft spot. So by my count, we've had four of these developer days in the past 12 months. Um, we had one here a year ago. Uh, we had, uh, there was one at, um, associated with LAD last year. There was a standalone one that uh, was organized by Livermore in January, I want to say, something like that, and then the one yesterday. Um, and every one of them, you know, when I ask my guys afterwards, what do you think of it? It's always great. Because um, if you get a bunch of Lustre developers in a room talking, working on Lustre, uh, good things happen. 
Yesterday's was kind of interesting, unfortunate almost, that uh, I think it maxed out, that there were more people that wanted to get in, and we were limited by the size of the space in the room, and so we had to turn people away. So um, another sign of uh, the growth of the Luster community. Um, I got a kick out of Andreas' slide, then Jessica mentioned it again. Um, we got, we're like cool back at the universities again. I think that's a, a great place to be with the universe or with, uh, with Luster. Um, uh, you know, I got nothing against old guys. I know a few, but um, if, if the kids are starting to pick it up and adopt it, I think that's a great sign for the future of Luster. Um, and then the BOF at uh, SC 2015 in Austin. Um, uh, here's a picture from that BOF. Uh, when we signed up for the BOF, Who's that good-looking guy in the front there, huh? Uh, when we signed up for this BOF, they gave us a room with, for 100 people. That's kind of historically what sort of attendance we had at a BOF. Um, as you can see, we had well more than 100 people. There's people standing in the back. It's not so clear from the picture. They're seated all down that middle aisle. Um, we unfortunately lost a few people because they couldn't get in the room there in the back. Um, we did pass around a sign-up sheet. Uh, probably lost a few people. We've got 146 names on that sign-up sheet. So, there are definitely a lot of people out there very interested in Luster and what's going on in the Luster world. So all this sounds like great news. What's the problem? Um, why does anything need to change? Uh, so let's talk about this chart. Uh, so Luster, ha or I mean OpenSFS has three levels of membership, um, a promoter, adopter, and supporter. And the current annual dues for a promoter level membership are $300,000. For an adopter are $50,000 and for a supporter are five, is $5,000. Um, we have a couple of new names on this chart, but roughly this chart has the same names on it that it did a year or so ago. Uh, what's different is that um, a number of the promoters have dropped down to lower levels. So I think it was a little more than a year ago that Livermore, who was a founding member of, D of uh, OpenSFS going back to 2010, um, they dropped from a promoter level down to um, a lesser level. Uh, Oak Ridge was not too long after that. Oak Ridge was also one of the original founding members. Um, and then more recently, Seagate moved from uh, the promoter to adopter level. So kind of your initial reaction, I confess my initial reaction was, ooh, this is not good. Um, people are backing off from luster. Um, uh, and I don't think that's really true. A um, couple of points to make. One is, uh, they're all still very actively involved, those three. Um, so uh, maybe we can just do a show of hands here. If you're here from Oak Ridge, Livermore, or Seagate, stick up your hand, please. So a uh, quick count, that's a couple of dozen hands, probably. Um, so they're still very actively involved in the community. Um, but they've chosen to uh, involve themselves in luster in different ways. So to me, I say after thinking about it and absorbing this a little, this is part of the, the natural maturation process that's going on. So Peter Bojanic uh, told the story of six, seven years ago um, when uh, Oracle was doing distressing things. Um, Open SFS was formed in the first place. Um, there was a big push to, there was genuine fear that Luster wasn't going to make it. Um, a big push to kind of infuse some cash, some effort, some oomph behind uh, uh, luster. And I would say that on the whole has generally worked. And so as the market has matured, what we're seeing is these bigger companies are starting to use more standard commercial relationships to um, do their business with each other. So uh, say I'm with Cray, we have a long-term deep relationship with Seagate um, around a bunch of luster stuff. DDN and Intel have uh, various uh, business relationships. And then today we heard, um, I think, great news from Peter that uh, Intel and Seagate are forming a commercial relationship. So I think the vendors are starting to use these, uh, say, more standard commercial tools to have to mediate their relationships rather than having to have open SFS as some sort of a middleman. So um, uh, the uh, effect of this is that open SFS is becoming more of a community organization. Um, uh, the vendors are going to do their own thing in their own way. Um, and what's going to happen is that the community is starting to come to the forefront. And you see that with some of the slides I talked, or some of the examples I talked about, um, as the community gets bigger and more involved. Um, uh, so this is going to mean some changes. Um, uh, you know, right now the board consists of the board of directors of OpenSFS has representatives and vendors, guys like me, 
um, and the one community rep that you guys elected, Steve. Um, in a more community-driven organization, I can imagine a board would have not just Steve, but others of you that aren't necessarily associated with vendors. Um, uh, the financial structure is going to be different. Um, uh, Lug, I would suggest, probably works pretty well. We probably want to figure out how to keep that much the same. Um, but there's a lot of issues to work through as we go through this transition from a vendor-driven organization to a more community organization. Let me um, tell about one more thing that we did this year. One was uh, we, uh, this was probably six months ago, uh, we had this idea to find an outside president. So uh, at first the idea was pretty appealing. Um, find somebody that has not necessarily luster experience or knowledge, but somebody that has experience at building community, uh, open source communities. And uh, this would be a paid position. So just so everybody's clear, this is how much money I get paid um, as the chairperson of OpenSFS. Uh, it's not a paid position. But in this idea, we were going to find somebody, pay him or her. Um, and essentially, even though they'd have the chairman, chairperson title, they'd function as a salesperson. The idea was they'd go out and build the membership. Um, they would get paid, but they would bring in more money and additional dues um, to more than pay for their salary and be a way to grow the community. And in the end, we abandoned the idea. And I think um, why we did makes me think of Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, of all things. So I think most of you know the story of Dorothy. She uh, finds herself in Oz and goes on this quest to find a uh, heart for the tin man and a brain for the scarecrow and courage for the lion. And what she really wants for herself is to go home. And what takes her the whole story to figure out is that the whole time she had the power within herself to go home. And so I think when we were searching for a president, we were sort of looking for an answer out there somewhere, somebody, the man behind the curtain to come in and sort of fix all our problems for us. And I think that's not how it's going to work. I think um, we have within the power here in this room to uh, make open SFS into the luster, make the luster community into what we want it to be. And uh, it's not going to be some magic guy from outside, but it's going to be the work of the people in this room that make that happen. So this is the point where I tell you that um, this talk today is really just a tease for a talk at this time tomorrow. So there's a board panel meeting at, uh, I think, quarter to five tomorrow. Um, what I'd like all of you to do is think about what a community-driven organization would look like. Um, bring your questions, bring your comments. Um, bring your ideas. Uh, we'll have an open discussion. I think that's an hour-long discussion, um, and I think uh, this would be a good uh, pivot point to go figure out how to make OpenSFS into the type of community organization we want it to be. No, I'm done. I'm done with a minute to spare. Uh, I think it's uh, back to you and Orlean. Charlie Carroll. I, you know, <laughs> oh. <laughs> let's applaud Charlie Carroll. <laughs> Play on. That was fantastic.